right, so this course focuses on different styles of logistics, different types and sizes of ships that are being used, and how to be an effective logistics pilot, both on grid and in communication with your FC and your fellow Lodgy pilots. Let's go over the hulls first. We'll talk about the frigates first. Uh, this is Tech 1 and Tech 2 versions. The pros are they're very speedy and they rep quite a bit for their small size. Cons are obviously that they have very small rep range and they all require some form of cap management. Even if you have uh, Logistics Frigates 5, you generally cannot perma run all your modules without injecting, which can be challenging for newer players, but it is what it is. And that would be the for the Tech 1 line, the Navitas for Galente, the Burst for Mimitar, the Bantam for Kaldari, and the Inquisitor for Amar. And then their Tech 2 variants, the Deacon for Amar, the Scalpel for Mimitar, the Thalia for Galente, and the Kirin for Kaldari. Any questions on frigates? Anything that some of the more experienced people here think I might have missed with the frigate overview? Are they all armor rep or, or all shield rep, or they have their respective bonuses? Yeah, good question. Um, the races are actually divided along those lines, so you'll see Shield logistics are Kaldari and Mimitar ships, and armor logistics are Amar and Galente ships. Good question. Anything else? Cool. I will right, we'll move on to cruiser logistics, Tech 1 and Tech 2. So the pros of cruiser logistics are obviously that they're a bit tankier than the frigate ones. Uh, they generally can have less cap management. Um, there's still some stuff you have to do, but you generally won't see cap boosters on cruiser logistics. Again, generally, there are obviously fits out there that are going to include cap boosters, um, but most of the time you're relying on your ability to cycle your reps uh, only when necessary in order to conserve your cap. So there's minor cap management. Uh, and these are the most widely used logistic ships in the game. Not the most powerful, but they are the most widely used, the cruisers. The cons are the cost of the Tech 2 variants and the skill point requirements of the Tech 2 variants. The Tech 1 are very easy to get into, though. And those would be, I'll try and cover them slightly differently this way. For uh, Mimitar, you have the Scythe, and it's Tech 2 Big Brother, the Scimitar. For Galente, you have the Exeker and its big brother, the Oneros. For Amar, you have the Augur and its big brother, the Guardian. And then for Kaldar, you have the Osprey and its big brother, the Basilisk. And then you also have Triglavian uh, Logistics, the Rodiva and the Zarmazad, or as we call it, the Zazmataz. Tiny thing to mention about the Triglavian um, logistics is that they don't rep a flat amount like all the other logistics ships. They actually ramp up their repping just like their damage cousins ramp up their damage, right? So you start out repping less than uh, a comparable ship of its size and then the longer you rep the same target, the more your repper is actually effective, so you'll actually surpass the uh, conventional rep after a few cycles. Questions on cruiser logistics? That's just Tech 1 and Tech 2. Uh, we are going to come back to cruisers in a second, but we're going to move on sort of on the standard line up to triage. Triage are capital ships, also known as faxes, fleet auxiliaries. The pros, obviously, are that they are extremely tanky, require an entire fleet uh, many times to kill one of these things, or capital ships of your own. Um, they can solo logistics entire fleets in certain situations. Usually you'll see them in small groups, one or two maybe, uh, maybe three. 
The cons are obviously cost, skill points, they're very slow, and they're big targets. So if you put a triage on the field and your opponent has the ability to escalate with capitals of their own, they're probably going to do that. Question. Do they have an AOE heal? Go ahead. No, they do not. There are no AOE heals in target. Yeah, everything's single target. Yeah. Why good. are they so effective at keeping ships up there? Because they can lock. So when you turn on the triage module, actually, you know what? Let's just pull this up. That's a good question. So let's look at a Tech 2 triage module. I'll link this in Fleet. We'll look at the stats that it gives. So it's going to reduce your velocity to zero, right? You can't move. Um, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Capital, remote, logistics, duration, bonus, shield, armor, whole energy is going to be minus 75% so that the reps cycle super fast. Uh, Rep amount is 450%, so they rep four and a half times more than uh, a standard capital rep without this module turned on. Again, we're talking about capital-sized repairs, not large, like the Tech 2 cruiser variants would be using. Um, and then it's got a local tank bonus as well, so the, sh the local armor repair and local shield booster duration bonus is minus 50, so they're half as fast. Uh, sorry, twice as fast. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, armor repair and shield booster amount is, again, 120% more than it is without this module. Uh, and then range, 200% more range, right? So that is how. Uh, there should be a sensor... Scan resolution bonus, there you go. That's... That's the, the last kind of big bonus there. Scan resolution bonus is 900%. So even though it's a capital ship, it can lock much smaller ships very, very quickly. So if someone's taking damage, you can lock them super fast and get extremely powerful reps on them uh, very, very quickly. Okay. So, so you can still alpha them... You can alpha their friends off the field, but you have to alpha them like basically one shot. Or they're gonna get rid of yes, them. yeah, very true. Um, if you were on the fleet the other night or uh, heard anything about that, um, we were volleying Serbs off the field. Triage would not have helped them there. There's nothing that triage could have done because we were locking the target. We were all shooting at the same time. The surface dying in one shot. Uh, no logistics in the game is going to be able to help that. If you're getting volleyed off the field, that's it. And actually, we'll get into that a little later from the Logi's point of view. Um, what it's like watching your, your allies getting volleyed off the field and what to do or not do. Um, but yeah, th there's nothing that's going to stop that except for killing the enemy DPS ships. Alright, cool. Sorry for sidetracked. No, not, not sidetracked at all. Those are great questions. Any other questions on triage? <clears throat> okay. And those ships are the Apostle, the Amar ship. The Kaldari one is the Minakawa. The Galente one is the Ninazu. And the... Uh, Mimitar one is the Lif, and actually these ones have a slight deviation to the rule I told you guys a minute ago. Let me pull this up to make sure I'm right. We talked earlier about how Amar and Galente are always the armor repper ones, for example. Uh, if you look at the Apostle, it gets bonuses to capital remote armor repair amount, so that holds true to the rule I told you, but if you look at the Ninazu, which is the Galente one, you'll see that it gets bonuses to both armor and shield capital repairs. Same thing with the Lif. So the Galente and Minmatar triage ships can do either uh, armor or shield. And the Kaldari one is locked into shield and the Amar one is locked into armor just by, by the, the bonuses that they get. <clears throat> cool.
questions on those. Okay, so let's cover some of the other ones that are sort of non-standard. Uh, T3s, T3 cruisers can be fit as logistics ships. Um, that's generally going to be the Loki and the Legion. Loki for shield, Legion for armor. You can fit Tengus and Protei for remote reps, but it's generally not done. Uh, they're not very good at it. Um, pros are that they're very tanky, they're versatile, and they have a heavy rep. Uh, it's short range, though. So that's a con, right? Short range. They cost a lot, and they are a heavy SP skill point investment. And like I mentioned, usually the Loki and the Legion, um, Proteus and Tank, you can, but not very well. And then the other kind of outlier is the Nestor battleship size ship, uh, which has a bunch of weird bonuses to it, but basically it's a big logistics ship. Uh, the pros are that it brings utility to the fleet. It actually has a fleet hanger, so you can refit off the Nestor. Um, and it has pretty heavy reps, uh, considering. The cons are that it has a high cost, and it is more vulnerable to getting blasted off the field very quickly than, for example, a faster-moving Guardian would be. <clears throat> Questions on sort of the outliers? Oh, there's one more. Sorry, spider tanking. Anyone know what spider tanking is? Want to give a shot at uh, describing that? Is it where you rep each other? Uh, Logies? Kind of. So Logi ships, you know, if your other, if your uh, friendly Logi ship is taking damage, you're definitely going, going to want to repair them. Um, but spider tanking is where every ship in the fleet, or not every ship, most ships in the fleet are a single type of combat ship. Uh, and what I mean by combat ship is like a damage dealing ship, except for in their high slots, or at least some of their high slots, they have uh, remote repairs or remote shield boosters fit, and they will spider tank each other. It's kind of like a web. Um, bonuses are that they can be very uh, robust fleets. It's not complicated not to have a bunch of different uh, people in different roles, everyone is the same role. Uh, generally, you see this with drone boats, really, because the drones can do damage. You don't need to take up your high slots with turrets or, or missile launchers. And then all your high slots can be remote armor reppers or remote shield reppers, whatever the situation calls for. And then all your drones are doing damage, and you're repairing each other uh, when you're taking damage. It is very easy to screw this up, though, and accidentally shoot your friends, because you're locking up enemies and friendlies at the same time. Um, and Lots of other funky stuff can happen with that fleet. It, it kind of requires everyone to have a brain and have it turned all the way on. Are there any damage dealing ships that have bonuses for Logi? Yeah, you'll see spider tanking, uh, Vedmax, and I want to say all the uh, Triglavian stuff gets reps to, or bonuses to that, don't they? Let's check out the Kiki. Yeah, it gets a bonus, 50% reduced remote armor repair capacitor need, and 100% bonus to remote armor repair range. Uh, all the Triglavian ships get bonuses to this, which is kind of strange. They're, they're very weird bonuses, honestly, um, but they're there. You definitely can spider tank your kikis and your vedmax and your drex and i even think your lishax have those bonuses okay then let's talk about standalone logistics versus cap chain logistics um x and fleet if you have a logistics ship ship on hand uh that you're you're sitting in right now we can maybe talk about those just and sorry just include the uh include the actual ship you're in sorry i should have mentioned that Simi, Deacon, Scalpel, Nestor. Cool. Okay, so we got a good spread there. The only thing we're missing is anything with cap chain. So all, f actually, the, the Nestor. Okay, perfect. So the first three, the Scimitar, the Deacon, and the Scalpel are all what you'd call standalone logistics. They do not require um, cap transfers from another ship in the fleet to be effective. 
Uh, they're usually, usually micro warp drive fit, but in some cases they're afterburner fit. Uh, they don't rely on cap chains, like I just mentioned, uh, and they can require cap management and or drugs in order to manage their capacitor. That's all the frigates, the Mimitar, Galente, Triglavian, and T3 uh, logistics ships. Those are all standalone logistics ships. So I'm actually sitting in a Deacon right now. <clears throat> and you'll see the fit doesn't include any cap transfers. Same thing will go for the uh, scimitar and the scalpel. Those guys don't have cap transfers. So we'll switch over and start talking about cap chain logistics, which is the Nestor and then the Amar and Kaldari cruisers. So that's the Augur, Guardian, Osprey, Basilisk, and the Nestor, like I just mentioned. These ones, if you look at that Guardian fit, have cap booster or cap uh, transfers fit in their high slots. This is because in a fleet with the other Guardians, you actually cap chain each other. The capacitor transfer sends more capacitor than it requires to activate. It violates one of the laws of physics. You gain energy by uh, running it, right? Which the law of conservation of energy violates that one. So that's it's illegal in real life, but in EVE, we can create energy out of thin air. Um, what you'll do is you'll just cap chain up with all your other logistics pilots in fleet. Everyone will have a cap buddy for up and down, and then uh, you all run your cap chains and you basically have capacitor forever. Uh, it's very, very hard to newt out a cap chain, uh, even with Balgor, it's right on top of Guardians. It's it's even then it's difficult to do. So cap chains are very powerful in keeping uh, all of your logistic ships running their reps. Can I add a note to that? Please do. But like when we <laughs> killed that basilisk in our fleet two days ago, that was a cap chain chain ship. Uh -huh. That completely fucked them up. They probably had to redo their entire cap chain because we killed one of their ships. Yeah, so actually let's try this. Um, we're going to pretend that our fleet channel is actually the, the logistics channel. And we're going to pretend we're all in Guardians. So everyone's got a Guardian. And what we need to do is everyone is going to have an up and down transfer. Let me actually undock so I can show how this works. Um, if you guys are in 9.3, you can undock real quick and just coast on the undock. And, uh, stay tethered, please. I just got a rat timer as I was landing at the fort. Not, not when I jumped through. Nice. But okay. As I landed. Um, so you, you guys will see, if you're looking at the stream, how I've got my modules set up. I've got my armor reps on F1, 2, 3, and 4. And then I've got my cap transfers over here as it, one is kind of above the other. And this is just this is not something you have to do, but this is how I mentally remember. Uh, I have an up transfer and a down transfer. And so if our fleet was a Logi channel, I would have Sizzy and default on my watch list. Sizzy is my up transfer, default is my down transfer. Default would have me and DJ on his watch list. I'm his up, DJ is his down. You guys see how this is going? Yeah. DJ. Sometimes you do two up, one down, which is not the second person up. It is. No, no, no. You'd never do no. two up, one down. That makes no sense. We, we've done it before in like a practice league. Yeah, but that's that's two rep. That's two modules up and one down. Because that's it's, what I'm saying. If they call, for, if you have like, people. if you have three and you're doing, you're not, it's the way it's called from that's confusing. Yeah, we don't need to confuse this here. We do one up, one down. That's the standard throughout pretty much all of EVE, actually. You can take this to, to other alliances as well if you need to for whatever reason. Uh, one up, one down is very standard. Kai, for example, would have, have his up transfer on Kimball and his down on Roach. Everyone following how to set up a cap transfer or a cap chain? Yep, yep. No. Okay. Uh, whoever said no... Tell me uh, what's not clear. I 
I, I just didn't I just didn't understand the one up one down thing. Okay, so you're looking at fleet chat, right? Yes. Okay, and in fleet chat, we're all listed in alphabetical order. Okay. And who who am I talking to, by the way? Uh, I'm I'm in a ship as space dick. Okay, great. So space, got it. Okay, so. Um, if Roach wasn't here, right, if he was not in fleet, for example, then you're, okay. you're, uh, oh, what, well, what might be confusing is that you don't have remote capacitor transfers on your ship. Is that what's confusing? Because you won't have those unless you're in a, a Guardian or, uh, another of the cruisers that I mentioned a minute ago. I'm in the Inquisitor. Right, so your Inquisitor is a standalone logistics. It doesn't rely on a cap chain. Okay. But if you were in a cap chain ship, like the Guardian, or the Augur, or the Osprey, or the Basilisk, you would have cap transfers on your ship. And you would need to add the people who are above and below you in the Logi channel onto your watch list. So for me, I have Sizzy, who's above me. There's no one below me, so I just go to the top of the list and add default. He's my down transfer, right? Do you want to do a mock run where we just put two rep on one up, one down? I uh, can't because we're tethered, but... We you can lock the fort. <clears throat> Sizzy and default, can you lock the fort, please? Cool. So they're both locking the fort. I can lock them up. I'm going to give Sizzy my up. Space deck lock and the fort. And default my down. Right. And this this is how it would look. So if I'm doing my job correctly as a as a guardian pilot, I'm gonna have a remote capacitor transfer going to Sizzy and one going to default. And they're each gonna have one going to me. Again, that they're not gonna have uh, this right now because they're not in the right ships. This is just an example. Uh, and one other person. And we would chain this all the way up and down the logic channel. Everyone is receiving two cap transfers from two other people. The space or so Roach or SpaceX you you lock the fort, that means you can lock us and we can lock you. So you'd be locking me and Kukendal. Yep. Koi. Kai, sorry. So Roach, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so lock the fort. Do you know what that means? So lock the Fortazar. So target the fort is early. And then approach us, so you can become part of the cap chain. You're gonna lock me, and you're gonna wall lock Kai. Okay. We're just there. Right, we go. Kai. And then who is the other person I'm supposed to lock? So, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Look in, look in the fleet chat. Who's the person above you? Uh, Kai. Right. So, Kai, who's the person below you? S space Dick. Uh, well, you're, you're Space Dick. Roach isn't here, right? Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm both. both no, I know, but the, the character isn't here in system. We have to ignore yeah. that character. Okay. So, Kai is above you, and then Susie's below Susie. you. Yep, that's it. That's all there is to it. So in a situation where you're in cap chain logistics, you're going to have two cap transfers. You're going to give cap to those two people uh, pretty much whenever the fleet is doing nothing, or especially in combat, right? Because we want to keep each other all capped up. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Everyone can clear their locks. When would you start a cap chain? Like immediately when you get in combat? Instantly. Yeah, it's the first thing you have to set up. Uh, it makes cap chain logistics a little more cumbersome because you have to lock up your cap buddies and start the cap going and pay attention to the incoming damage, which in many cases is going to happen very quickly. It's uh, it's more more brain cells definitely needed for doing that effectively. But it comes with a lot of benefits, so you'll see it uh, quite often. OK. 
Okay. Hopefully we've covered cap chaining. Any more questions on cap chain stuff? What happens if you get um, jammed? Yeah, so if you get jammed, you mean specifically in a cap chain or just in general? Uh, mainly in the cap chain, but if that's part of it, you can go in general. Yeah, definitely both. So getting jammed in general is really not good in a logistics ship. And the FC and the Logi Anchor and kind of everyone in the situation should be doing as much as possible to avoid uh, Logi getting jammed as possible. And the enemy fleet is going to do, be doing their absolute best to jam the logistics, right? That's, that's a thing that they want to do in order to win the fight. Um, getting jammed in a cap chain usually means that it's time to uh, switch the chain. So, like, if I get jammed in a fight, Sizzy needs to cap default, and default needs to cap Sizzy. They need to cut me out of the chain for the moment uh, until I get unjammed, and then I can start transferring cap back to them. They can reincorporate me into the chain. All of this while... Uh, Broadcasting if you're getting shot and locking up the people who are getting shot and repping them. It's it's complicated. And actually the, the same principle goes for if a logistics ship dies. So if we're in a fight and I get killed, Sizzy and Default need to adjust the cap chain and cap each other and make sure that they're still, like, Sizzy needs to still be capping uh, Roach, and Default still needs to be capping DJ, right? If Kai dies, then Kimball and Roach are going to have a problem on their hands. They need to adjust. It's a complicated little dance there, but it's definitely necessary. So is it normally one big chain, then, or do you set up into little groups of three or four, or it depends on your fleet comp? Some groups do uh, cat buddies, so it'll be just one-on-one, -on -one and I'll give both my transfers to Sizzy, and he'll give both his transfers back to me, and then, you know, sometimes you end up with a group of three at the end of the day. The trouble with that is then, <clears throat> if one Lodgy dies, then you have to sort of figure out which duo they're going to be inserted into in the middle of a fight, which generally doesn't lend itself to as much simplicity as the method that I just mentioned. Um, pretty much, if I died, I would neg one in the channel like this. And then I'd leave the channel so that it's really easy for the people who are still there to see, okay, now my new capities are, you know, A, B, and C. Or A and B, rather. And, you know, and they've cut me out. Um, something that you should do as a logic pilot if you're flying cap chain logistics is to have your up and down on your watch list but also have your up plus one and your down plus one on your watch list so that if you know for me for example so taka's joined the channel um i have taka as my up and default as my down if taka dies i've already got sizzy on my watch list i'm going to start capping him as my up now does that make sense Yeah. If you're expecting really heavy losses, then maybe you add three, right? Up, and then plus one, and then plus two, right? So I would add Taka, Sizzy, and Roach on mine, and for up, just for up. Then I have default DJ and Kimball. That's almost the entire channel as my down. Um, and I, I would actually color these two. So let me do this so you guys can see it if you're watching the stream. Let's see. Up is Taka. Followed by Sizzy, followed by Space Tick. Then down is default DJ and Kimball. And then the way that I would organize this would probably be. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Let's 
except have you talked about just color coding in general for Logi watch lists or have you gotten there? So not for watch lists because we haven't really gotten there yet. Um, uh, this is a this is a super specific uh, way to color code for cap chains only. So it, it's something that we haven't really dealt with before, but it's it's worth just looking at how I would do it. Again, you guys could do it whatever way makes sense in your in your heads. So just this this makes sense in my brain. If it doesn't make sense to you, you can ignore this. But Taka and Default, I can see really easily those are the two uh, darkest colors. Taka is up, Default's down. If Default dies, then it's DJ. If DJ dies, then it's Kimball. If Taka dies, then it's Sizzy. If Sizzy dies, then it's Bass Stick. You guys see what I'm looking at here if you're looking at the stream? Yes. Cool. Okay. Didn't think I'd be going over that today, but I'm glad the question was asked. So we spent a lot of time on cap chains. Um, it's, we're kind of getting into 201 territory, so I'm going to move us on here in a second. Any last burning questions on cap chains? Hmm. Okay, let's pop open our pre-flight checklist compendium and let's look at the logistics general section. Actually, you know what? Let's just look at the general section and pull some stuff out of there. The general, read this first, that part. So this goes for anyone in a fleet ever. Uh, but especially logistics and DPS. Um, logistics should always have their fleet window open. So fleet window in my UI is sort of at the left here. And I want to be on the history tab. This is where you live as Logi. Your, your mouse kind of floats over here because as people broadcast, right, you need to lock them up by control clicking that broadcast and uh, start repairing them quickly that the time is of the essence in that situation um actually that would be wrong the guardian i would broadcast for armor um and then we have coloring sort of preset for broadcasts so you can see my shield broadcast came up as blue my armor broadcast broadcast came up as green target broadcast comes up as red the way i set that up is by going to the four white lines in the top left going to broadcast settings and it brings up this fun little thing here and you can actually share these which is what i just did in fleet some of them you'll notice i don't have checked because i don't care about these right at location spotted enemy need backup fleet event i don't care about those i don't want to see them in my list I want to see armor, cap, target, warp, align. Uh, hold position is debatable. You could probably uncheck that. Um, need shield. In position is a pretty niche situation. Uh, the sort of agreed upon usage of in position in EVE is you broadcast for cap. Actually, I don't have a shortcut for that. Broadcast for cap. And then as like a DPS ship, let's say you're a laser ship and you kind of need cap periodically to keep running your lasers because they're really cap hungry. You'll broadcast for cap and then as soon as you are full on cap, you will broadcast in position. Yeah, very niche usage of that, um, but it's there. Now you guys know it. In position will tell the Logi pilots that are giving you capacitor, hey, I'm good, you don't need to cap me anymore. Uh, this has also kind of gone away. The necessity for this has kind of gone away with... Uh, can someone lock the fort? Tell me who you are. Says it is. Thank you. Also, I didn't know that's how niche was. I thought it was niche, not niche. Niche, niche, tomato, tomato. Um, the need for this has kind of gone away with these notifications. So you'll see this pop up here, zero remote capacitor transmitted to scalpel. Um, I don't need him to broadcast in position to tell me he's full. I know that he's full because there's zero cap being transmitted. Now, now that he's started using his cap and he's repping me, um, you can actually see I'm transmitting cap to him now at each cycle. 
So 118 was sent on that one, 96 was sent on that one. And I would just keep capping him in that case. Um, pretty, again, pretty niche, as you would say, uh, usage of that particular broadcast. So, but now you know it. You'll get to know also some interesting ways to use. I use that to tell optimal range a lot of times. So I don't, mem I haven't memorized the upper optimal range. So if I see a non-normal broadcast amount, and I know I'm getting full reps, then it's a good way to tell that you're too far away. Getting too far away. Yeah, that can help for sure. Any questions on broadcast colors and setting those up? Okay, you can control click entries in your history window, and this is the preferred way to lock up friendlies that need assistance. So I see Sizzy broadcast there. Can you lock the uh, the four, please? Just keep it locked for now, I guess. So if you see someone broadcast, you don't want to like go searching around in space for them. You don't want to find them on your watch list. You don't want to be looking for them in fleet. None of that is correct. You want to control click right there in the broadcast window. That is where you should find the people who need help and lock them up. All right, let's see. Any other Logi specific stuff? How do we request help? Yeah, I was going to leave that out because, well, yeah, it's necessary. Um, so in the fleet window, there's a bunch of little icons at the bottom here, and sort of to the left, there's a shield and armor one. Um, I would highly recommend against using those little buttons and instead, instead set up shortcuts. So if you go to your escape menu and go to shortcuts and type in broadcast in the filter in the top right, you'll see all of your broadcast shortcuts. And for me, I have broadcast need armor as shift A, and need shield as shift S. Okay, just heading again, looking at the pre-flight checklist compendium, heading down to the logistics specific part, logistics general kind of general instructions for any Logi pilot. Uh, like we talked about, make sure you join the Logi channel. Does everyone know how to get to the Logi channel? Figgle.logistics or Figgle space logistics. It is linked in the Flying Dangerous MOTD. There's a big old PVP channel, and in that channel is our Logi channel and our Boost channel. So in this case, you go to the Boost channel, or sorry, the Logi channel. Wow, that was dumb. And just as a reminder, if you are not currently flying logistics in a fleet, you should leave this chance to logistics. Goldie, what is a good composition of DPS logi for any given fleet? Is there a rule of thumb FCs use? Great question. Um, there is a rule of thumb. It's very rough. Uh, let's think of it this way. If you have two logistics, and this is a question just to to the group in general. If you have two logistics and one of them is getting shot, right, isn't dead, is just getting shot, how many logi do you have? None, because he's going to be fixing his buddy. One. You have one logi, right? The logi getting shot cannot help itself. The logi that is repping it is the only help that it has. You have one logistics. Okay. If you have three logi, and one of them is getting shot. How many logi do you have? Still one? Two, right? One's getting shot, the other two are trying to keep it alive. So that is a roundabout way of kind of answering the question. It's a very hard question to answer. It really depends a lot on the incoming damage and what you're expecting to see when the enemy fleet starts shooting at you. Is one logistics ship enough to keep you alive? Then you need two, right? Because one has to be able to keep the other one alive. Is is there going to be so much incoming damage that you need two logi to kind of repair your fleet? Then you need three, right? Is there going to be so much incoming damage that you're going to need four or five? You need to kind of add one. Um, when you were talking about fleet size, if I'm looking at a fleet of maybe 20, I probably need three. 
if I'm looking at maybe 15 or lower, maybe two, again, this is total fleet members, uh, anything above 30, I'm probably looking at four and then five after that. It, it's, uh, it's not an exact science. Are these special guns on my ship? No, these are remote armor repairs. These, this is a logistics class we're doing right here, and these are how I repair friendly ships. Lodgy anchor. So I'm, I think most of you are familiar with anchoring and what an anchor is, right? Anyone not familiar with that? This is default. I'm not. Okay, cool. So an anchor is a way for a single member of the fleet to move everyone else around so that everyone else can focus on managing their modules, watching broadcasts, paying attention to when the enemy fleet is going to lock them up and try and start shooting them. Um, an anchor is the person who is moving the fleet around. Uh, we can actually do this right now. So if everyone in fleet right click zip slings, right? I just typed the next there, right click and go to fleet and go to add to watch list. Everyone can add me to their watch list. And once you have me on your watch list, everyone go ahead and approach zip. And you can just use the watch list to select me and approach. You can do it with the right click or the radial menu. Okay, and go ahead and turn on whatever prop mod you have, Afterburner or Micro Warp Drive. Either way is fine. Cool. I'm starting to move. There goes Sizzy. Here comes the Inquisitor. Cool. So now we're all in the same spot. We're all going to be within optimal range to repair each other. We're all going to um, be away from danger if I'm a good enough anchor to keep us away from danger, right? Uh, we're all going to go towards our friendly fleet to get ECM drones smart bombed off if we're having to deal with ECM drones. This is anchoring, and those are some of the reasons that you anchor in a logistics wing. Questions on anchoring? Is uh, approach preferred or keep at range or orbit? Depends on the ship, depends on the fleet. Uh, in that pre-flight checklist compendium, I am working on getting the answers to all those questions for each individual fleet that we fly. Some of the questions are already answered, some are not. Uh, generally for smaller ships, you want to be orbiting. Uh, actually, generally for logistics in general, I prefer orbit. Some Logi anchors prefer approach. Um, in general, just... Uh, Ask your Logi anchor what they prefer. Cool, thanks. Yeah, good questions. You'll set up your watch list. We already talked about this a bit. Um, you'll have your Logi anchor kind of at the top of the watch list. Other people that you want to have on the watch list that are not other logistics ships or your cat buddies would be the FC. Right? You always want to have the FC uh, on your watch list. And in many cases, you want to have the FC pre-locked no matter what you're doing. Um, other special snowflake ships in the fleet, like recons and links, you want to have those locked because the enemy fleet is likely to primary them. Um, sorry, I said pre-locked. I meant on your watch list. And then sort of other important ships, this will vary fleet by fleet. and You'll get a feel for it the more you do it. And then as much of the DPS as possible. Your watch list caps out at 15. So you want to put the important folks at the top and then anyone else you can fit on there afterwards. Another thing you'll do before undocking is double check that you have drugs and nanite paste in your cargo. Uh, each ship generally has different kinds of drugs, but one thing that is very common to logistics is mind flood. Let me pull that up. So standard mind flood booster has these potential drawbacks. Shield booster penalty. And that's local shield booster penalty. Um, armor repair amount penalty. Again, that's local armor repair amount. Uh, turret optimal range. And missile, missile explosion radius. If you'll notice, none of those side effects 
negatively impact our logistics ships, unless for whatever reason we're running local reps, which we don't do. Right, local versus remote. We all run remote reps. We're not running any local reps. The bonus that you get is a capacitor modifier. With the standard mine flood, you get a 10% capacitor modifier, which can be huge. So mine flood is great because all the drawback, we could get every single drawback and we don't care at all. Like that's fine. All we all we really care about is that capacitor modifier, which is big on Logi ships, because cap can be the make or break in a Logi ship. How long does that last for? Depends on the booster. Um, it also depends on your skills. Let me pull it back up. Actually, have some of my cargo. Should have just looked at that. Uh, booster duration: thirty minutes. So it generally will last a whole fight. And uh, most of the time, the FC will tell you to take drugs when they're ready to do that. When they think the engagement's about to start, they'll tell the whole fleet to take drugs. Usually drugs are bad, but not in this case. All right, and then one optional thing that I'll recommend for you guys is when you're flying Logi, open up your broadcast settings like we talked about earlier and remove the broadcast target option so that you just see the people who are asking for remote reps, right? If you see the broadcast targets, you might accidentally lock up a target and that can be valuable time uh, lost unlocking that target and, you know, getting distracted by that instead of locking up someone who's actually taking damage. So, just like that. Questions on that checklist? Would you have to go and change that checklist again if you change ships or... No, so that top part there, the Logi General, is supposed to be um, general instructions for logistics no matter what ship you're flying. If you look down further in the checklist, there's specific, there's all our, our fleet doctrines listed down there, and you can uh, see specific instructions for Logi in each of those fleets. Again, some of them are still under construction. Okay, would there be a situation where you might switch from Logi to something that did, like, DPS? What do you mean? Like, say your Logi ship got blown up and you needed to come back in something else? Oh, yeah, I what, mean, that, that can definitely happen, yeah, for sure. So, when that happens, would you need to go through and change, change it back so you could see targets? Yes, yes, you would. Good question. Cool. Um, how to fly your ship? So if you're not the anchor, it's super easy. You anchor up, you generally will turn on your prop mod, whatever prop mod your ship uses, and you will repair the people that broadcast. At that point, you are just staying anchored, uh, locking up people that broadcast, and repairing them. Um, anchor up generally means, like we talked about, orbit or approach uh, in some cases. Staying we'll talk a little more about anchoring here, actually. So we talked about it. A second ago, when we kind of demonstrated it, here's some of the benefits. Um, you gain transversal against things that are trying to shoot you by orbiting. Um, you keep up with the anchor, meaning you don't pull range away from the reps and cap transfers and away from the fleet, right? You want to stay close. And if a T2 destroyer, right, a T2 command destroyer with MJD abilities... Sorry about that. With MJD, MJD abilities comes to kind of boosh your logistics wing away, you're likely to stay together. And you want that. You want the Logi wing to stay as close as possible to each other. If you're going to end up 100 kilometers away from the rest of the fleet, it's better to be together 100 kilometers away from the rest of the fleet than uh, split up 100 kilometers away from the rest of the fleet and then the other half is, you know, somewhere else. Um, Grouping up closely by anchoring increases the probability that that happens if you get boosted. Um, questions on, well, actually, let's do this, actually. 
a couple of more advanced things to note if you're not the anchor. Um, when someone broadcasts and you lock them up, if they're not taking damage yet, don't repair them yet. Um, unless we're in armor ships. Ah, damn it. Now we have to talk about this. Okay. Who knows the difference between shield and armor reps aside from which layer of health they affect? Shield goes immediately. Armor goes at the end. That's right. So if I were to do this... Uh, can someone lock the fort, please? Default, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a rep on default. I want you guys to pay attention to when I get the notification that armor has been transferred. I started it just now. No notification. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And there it is. So I got the notification after the cycle finished. If that was a shield booster, so anyone who's using shield logistics can lock up zip or default and turn on their repairers and you will see the repair cycle starts and you'll immediately get the notification that that uh, shield has been transferred. So that's the difference between shield and armor rips. <clears throat> this results in a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. If we're in a shield fleet, it's perfectly fine to wait until someone starts taking damage before you repair them. Um, there's no point in repairing early because you're just going to waste a cycle. If they're full on shield and you start a repair cycle with your shield booster, nothing happens. It's a complete waste of that, that cycle. With armor, however, if someone broadcasts and they're not taking damage, sometimes it is correct to start repping them before they take any damage. Because if the enemy's volley damage is high, what you may see is they'll take a ton of damage really quickly, and then you'll want to turn on all your reppers, but it's going to be a couple of seconds before any of your assistance lands, and they might die before that happens. So it is definitely a thing that you get used to. Each fight is going to be different. Each situation, you're going to have to feel out the incoming damage and adjust accordingly. Not something that I can... Uh, teach you. I can just kind of warn you about it that that is a thing that happens and uh, from there you have to get experience on it. Another thing is bait tanking. So if the enemy fleet shoots one of your very tanky ships, so in Nova if they start shooting one of the Slepnirs, which are the tankiest things on the field, um, as Logi it can kind of be a good idea to just put one rip on them. Um, and if each Logi puts one rep on them, they should stay alive, but they'll slowly bleed shield. And that's actually what you want. So if they're slowly, slowly dropping, the enemy fleet's going to keep shooting them. And you want the enemy fleet to keep shooting one thing, because you already have it locked, you know what's going on, and you're only using one of your reppers to keep it alive. And then as they kind of hit, you know, lower, maybe 50%, maybe like pulse a second booster on there. And then if they're getting lower than that, pulse a third. And then if they start dropping, you know, like legitimately dropping, then you can slap all four of them or however many you have on there. That'll keep the fleet interested in a single target and allow you to kind of slow down the pace. You can just pay attention to one target. You're not paying attention to like three people broadcasting at the same time because they think they're about to take damage or they are taking damage. You can see all the incoming damage is here. I can manage it like this. Bait tanking made sense? Make sense? You're making the enemy fleet think that you're breaking, that they're breaking through the reps, that your your reps can't hold. Really, though, you're just using a quarter of your uh, rep ability on that ship. Uh, it only works in certain situations. Again, with very tanky ships. So, if like a T1 Hurricane is getting shot by 30 Cerberuses, you probably need to slap all four of them on there real quick. And you'll see that because you'll lock up the target, and it'll be in low shields already. Does that all make sense? Any questions about any of that? Okay, uh, last section here, which is anchoring. And it's a, a section that I hesitate to go to because it's just so freaking complicated. Uh, oh, before I get to that question from Twitch chat, how effective are repair drones and are they used often? Repair drones are used very often. Mm -hmm. 
And they're actually way more effective than you would think. If you look at the info on my guardian, show info, I get a, where is it? 20% bonus to Lodgy Drone transfer amount per level of the Amara Cruiser bonus. So that's 100% bonus to Lodgy Repair, Lodgy Drone Repair Amount. If you look at these Lodgy Drones I have out, They're each going to transfer 35 HP per five seconds. That's five drones. Let's do some math. Oh, times five divided by five. I'm an idiot. That's 35 HP per second in addition to my, uh, my ship's reps. Uh, Logi drones are definitely a great help. As a comparison, one large rep on this thing is doing, where is it? 448 per six seconds. So Logi drones are another half a rep almost. That's another way to think about it. I have four remote armor repairs here, and my Logi drones are another half of one ripper. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Logi drones are definitely something we didn't bring up. Cool. Okay, anchoring. So you're the anchor. Um, you want to try and stay away from the enemy in most cases. Uh, this is because range is a great way to avoid damage. Uh, this doesn't work in all cases. Another great example, the fleet that we had just the other day, uh, the enemy was in all missile ships. Range effectively does not matter in that fleet. Um, their missiles are going to deal the same amount of damage from zero meters away all the way out to like 120, which is their max range. If you can somehow be outside of that max range, then fantastic, great, do that. But um, in a lot of cases, that's just not possible against missile ships. Against turret ships, range is absolutely a thing that you want to be concerned about. Uh, being further away from ships with turrets means that you're more likely to be in their fall off or just out of range in general. So as a Logi anchor, you're trying to stay away from the enemy in most cases. Questions on that? Go ahead and hover over your one of your reps, and you can see the optimal range. So with uh, armor, you get a pretty long optimal range and then a pretty short fall off after that. With shield, you get a pretty short optimal range and then a pretty long fall off after that. So they're just kind of different in that way. Um, so keeping away from the enemy fleet is great, but you need to make sure that you don't uh, drift outside of your optimal, or at least not too far outside of your optimal. You want to be close enough to get the max effectiveness of your reps. Okay, uh, the grid is like a sandwich. Logi and the enemy fleet are the bread, and the friendly fleet, your buddies, are the meat. You want to keep the meat between the two pieces of bread. If you can, uh, if you find yourself too close to the enemy fleet, right? That that's a big problem. Keep your fleet between you and them. Transversal. We talked about this a bit. Generally, just keep moving. Uh, but the closer to ninety degrees that you can move relative to the enemy fleet, the better you can mitigate their damage. Again, if they're using missiles, this does not matter at all. Uh, Logi lives matter. Focus on preserving Logi over preserving the rest of the fleet. Fleets can usually sustain DPS losses, right? If uh, we lose some DPS ships, usually it's okay. If we lose Logi ships, things can get dicey really quick. So focus on preserving, like if a scimitar next to you is taking a lot of damage and there's also a hurricane taking a lot of damage, keep the scimitar alive. Even if it means the cane dies. Same thing with like Shrike Fleet, for example. If a Talwar is taking a ton of damage and there's also a uh, Kirin next to you taking a lot of damage, keep the Kirin alive, even if it means the Talwar dies. 
Okay, and then as the Logi anchor, you're also kind of the Logi FC. So you want to be in communication with the FC uh, within reason. So let's talk about what that means. What, what do you actually want to communicate to the FC? Um, first of all, you want to tell them if reps aren't holding. Uh, don't panic them, right? If reps aren't holding, sometimes the FC knows that. Sometimes the FC is, has gotten into a situation where things are going to be rough for a bit, and then he's going to do his best to make the situation better. So you don't need to be like, oh my god, we're not holding. We need to get the fuck out right now. That's not your call. You just need to inform them. We're not holding. Um, if we're dying before you even lock the targets that are broadcasting, we're either being volleyed or people aren't broadcasting on time. Uh, if we can lock and apply reps, but we're still dying, we're breaking, right? So those are two different words that you can use as a Lodge FC, or just when talking about incoming damage in general, there's getting volleyed, which again is, you don't even have time to apply reps. The ship just dies. There's nothing you can do. That's getting volleyed or getting alphaed. Uh, then there's, we're breaking, which is I can lock up this target and I can apply repairs to it, but I'm not able to keep it alive it's going to die no matter what. Volleyed, breaking. Uh, and then, kind of as I hinted at before, don't over-communicate. You want to keep the comms clear for the FC, FC to uh, talk to the rest of the fleet as much as possible. Uh, part of your job, though, is to inform them of some of the critical information. And again, you'll get used to what that critical information actually is the more that you fly logic. Like everything else in EVE, the only way to actually understand the complexity involved in any particular role is to experience it for yourself. So get out there and be a Logi bro. Uh, and I will link some recommended further learning for you guys in Fleet. Hey Zip, could you discuss uh, overheating? When should we overheat our reps? Yeah, good question. Um, that situation I described when uh, we're breaking, right? You can lock the target and apply reps to it, but they're still dying. That's a great time to overheat. Um, if there's a very important or expensive ship that's getting shot at, and it looks like they're taking a lot more damage than you expected or a lot more damage than they can sustain, like if the FC is getting shot or the Logi Anchor is getting shot, um, that's a, an okay time to overheat too. Just make sure to uh, stop overheating and uh, don't burn out your reps. Um, something that you can do when you get really skilled is you can overheat um, one of your reps. Again, this is in really high damage situations. You can overheat one of your reps, and then if you're able to, like maybe you get to a, a little bit of a lull in the fight, um, repair it, and then while it's repairing, you kind of overheat the other ones a bit more than you normally would to make up for the loss rep that's, you know, currently repairing. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely a juggling act. I would not recommend it for, uh, for new Logi pilots, though. How do you repair it? If, you're, if any of your modules have taken damage, uh, I'll do this right here. So I'm going to heat this rep, and I'm going to apply it to default, and I'm just going to watch for it to take damage. I'm just watching the module here, I'm watching for a little uh, red block to pop up. It'll pop up in a second here if I keep going. Oh, there we go. So heat spreads across a rack. If you look at your ship fit, if you overheat one of these things in the top rack, other modules may get damaged from that heat, uh, including the actual module itself. So if you look... I just did two heated cycles of one rep, and both of these got damaged, 4%. Uh, in order to repair this, you either need to go to a station uh, or tether, or use nanite repair paste. Just right-click it, and click repair. Why not? <clears throat> oh, hey, I don't have any paste in the ship. Okay, let me grab that. Docking request accepted. Okay, that's, so you, I knew about going back and repairing, but I didn't know about the nanite paste. Yeah, so this is why almost every ship we have uh, in every doctrine has paste in the cargo.
so that if the FC asks you to, asks you to overheat, if there is a break or a pause in the fighting at any point, you can rep your modules. Like that. Just right click repair and they'll flash white. They'll be unusable while they're repairing. And then once they're done repairing, they will go back to normal and the red will go away. There was not any in the Inquisitor. Yeah, it's some of them we may need to add it to. If you notice anything else like that, please uh, bring it up ideally on Discord so that someone can get to it. Good question about the uh, the overheating and the repairing, though. Um, other questions? All right, you guys can go ahead and dock up. That is the class. Hopefully you all came away learning something new there uh, that you didn't know or got a feel for something that you had never tried before. Again, highly recommend that all of you go out there and volunteer to be Lodgy on uh, any upcoming operations so you can get a real taste for it. There's nothing like being the actual Lodgy in a fleet. You kind of get to decide if, if you win or lose, in a way. In the Inquisitor. Yeah, it's some of them we may need to add it to. If you notice anything else like that, please uh, bring it up, ideally, on Discord so that someone can get to it. Good question about the uh, the overheating and the...